Hey everybody, it's Jen from Jen Plans, and I'm doing a follow-up to my uh, original video on sinking funds, which I've linked uh, in the description of this video. Uh, I would recommend starting there first because it will give you a general overview of what sinking funds are, why they're important, why you should have them, and how to set them up. Um, but I got a lot of questions in the comment section and they were all kind of surrounding the same three big questions. Um, so I wanted to do a follow-up video because I think it will make more sense to answer the questions this way and go through another example. Um, those questions were, um, when do you start sinking funds? Like at what point in your budgeting journey? Uh, the second one was how to start setting them up for the very first time. And then the third question was, what do you do if you don't have enough money to fund all of them right away? Which I know is the reality for a lot of people, especially when they're getting started with their budget. So I wanted to do this video to answer those questions. And um, so I would recommend going to that video first. If you're new to sinking funds, start there and then you can pop over to this one. Um, but I hope this will answer some of those questions and then I'm going to go through an example um, toward the end because I just love examples and I think it makes it easier to follow when you can see real numbers and see them working around. So we'll jump to that in just a minute. But for right now, uh, the first question is, when do you start sinking funds? At what point in your budgeting journey? Um, I, as a lot of you know, if you've been following me for any length of time, I'm a huge Dave Ramsey fan. And so um, I will go ahead and link the book that kind of started it all for our family. It's called Total Money Makeover. Um, I've linked that in the description to the video. It's a great book that walks you through kind of, you know, what steps you should go in and why uh, when it comes to budgeting and saving and paying off debt. Um, and so if you are familiar with the Dave Ramsey baby steps, uh, sinking funds are part of your complete budget. So that should come before you start saving for an emergency fund, before you start paying off debt, before you start paying your house off early, um, you should be saving at least for the essential needs, especially the ones that are fixed in sinking funds. You can add the wants later, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Um, you know, if you have a heap of debt and no emergency savings at all, um, you should not be setting up your sinking fund for, um, let's say, vacations. Um, you know, that's something that can come later when you get a little bit more financially stable, but, um, but there are things that you need to start saving for as part of your budget now. And maybe they're not expenses that you pay every single month, but they're expenses that are coming up. I love the car. Anything related to car is a great example. Um, for example, car insurance. If you pay car insurance every three months or every six months in order to get a discount, you should be putting a little bit of money aside every month for that. So that's not a sinking fund that can really wait until you're totally out of debt because otherwise that expense is gonna come up and you're gonna have to find a way to pay for it. So it makes it easier to break those things down um, by the month, which I talked a lot about in the other video that you can watch for reference. Um, but anyway, for this one, for the purposes of starting a budget for the very first time, essential sinking funds come in the very beginning. They're part of your complete budget. So you should be doing them from the beginning for those essential things. And then you can add to them as you kind of weave throughout the rest of your journey. So that's the first question. The second question was how to start them. Uh, the best way that I have found to start them is to go through previous spending and see what your categories are. I get a lot of questions um, about which categories people should have. And the answer is it really depends on your situation, your family situation, your, um, your existing expenses. Uh, because, you know, I have a sinking fund for uh, let's say family pictures, um, but maybe you don't do family pictures <laughs> every year. I, mean, I don't know. This is just an example. So, um, you know, it varies from person to person. If you don't have a car, you don't need a car maintenance uh, sinking fund. So it just depends. So my recommendation is go through previous spending. Go through the last year of your spending and see what your categories are. Where did you spend your money? What things sprung up on you? You could probably think of two or three things now that came up in the past where you were like, oh, I need money for this and I need a lot of it and I haven't been saving for it. And so how am I going to pay for it? Those are things that should be in sinking funds. Um, so that's kind of how you get your categories and how you start. And then um, the last question, it, which I'll get into in the example too, to run through some numbers and then the last question that i got a lot is what happens if you don't you just don't have the money to fund all of your sinking funds 
Um, and the answer, there are a couple different answers to that. The first one is um, sometimes you need to you need to look at your other expenses. Maybe we need to cut expenses in other places. Look at your needs and look at your wants and separate that way and then reduce where you can. Another option is to earn more income, but for some people, um, the uncomfortable answer is that you need to lower your expenses and increase your income a little bit to make sure that your numbers are working out. Um, and so I know that's a hard reality for a lot of people and it's easier said than done, but I think there are little tweaks that we can make in our budget to make things work for most people. So I'm gonna go through an example um, that'll kind of cover question two and three, how to set it up and then what happens if you don't have enough money to work with in the beginning. Um, so hopefully this will be helpful. As always, if you have, um, if you have questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And um, I, I went ahead and linked, like I said, the total money makeover. And then I'm also going to link the notebook that I'm using um, that I just happen to love for my budgeting. Um, and then I'll link a couple other videos in the description too that you can find. So uh, let's go ahead and um, dive into the example. So step one is to start with your list of sinking funds and the amounts that you need. So. Um, step one, start with list and amounts. Car insurance, let's say, um, let's say your car insurance is paid every, um, I don't know, every six months. And uh, every six months you have to pay $600. Uh, so normally this would be, um, you know, if you break it down by month, that would be $100. So if you remember from the other video, if you watched the other video, um, we said, you know, you take your expenses and you divide them by the amount of months that you have left to pay them. So $100 for car insurance, every six months it's due $600, makes it $100 a month. Clothing, let's say you looked back and realized that, you know, you kind of spend around $100 um, a month on clothing. We'll go to entertainment and we see you know, maybe you go to a concert or you go to a game of some sort. So you spend 50 bucks on entertainment a month um, or, you know, you save up for some big stuff. Maybe you don't do it every month, but, um, you know, that's kind of the average. Medical, you know, we look at all of our medical bills for, you know, kind of routine care. Maybe you got sick once or twice. Let's say, um, you know, that's 25 a month average that you want to kind of tuck away for medical Car maintenance, um, most experts recommend between $75 and $150 per month per car that you should be setting aside for maintenance. So let's say, you know, a car's in pretty good shape, so we'll do 75 for that one. Um, vacation, let's say, you know, you and your friends go on a big vacation every year, that's something that's, you know, something that you do, so that's gonna be, you know, 100. And then Amazon Prime, I know it's not, um, it's not, doesn't, I don't think it's quite $10 a month that it would work out to be, but for the purposes of quick addition, we're gonna pretend that it's um, $10. So per month, you know, when you're looking at what you need and you start with your list and amounts, don't think about numbers yet, you just kind of add up what you need. Um, you're gonna get to four, this will get you to 460. Now, let's say you're starting for the first time, and so, you know, all of these numbers are still pretty average, but what happens if you're starting and you pay your car insurance every six months, um, but you're starting now and it's due in three months. So it's like three months from now and then nine months from now. So you don't have a full six months to save that $600. You only have, now you only have three months. So we need to go through and see, you know, for right now, for this month, what do we really need? We need more than 460 if we're gonna be saving for all these things because this isn't actually 100. This is actually, 200 because if $600 is due in three months, 600 divided by three months is $200 a month. So all of a sudden, this number that we thought was 460 needs to go up to 560. So if you're just starting out, you made your first list and then you're like, oops, this is actually due sooner. So now we have, you know, we look at this total amount that we need and the total amount that we need is 560. So um, after we started with our list and we had all our amounts and we figured out how much money we need, we compare it with the amount of money that we have. Um, and you have to ask yourself, do I have enough money to dedicate to these expenses? Do I have $560 in my budget to dedicate to the sinking funds, which will still allow me to do whatever step I'm on? So if you're supposed to be saving for an emergency fund, 
you know, do you have $560 to put into all of these categories? Um, or if you're paying off debt, do you want your snowball to be really big? Do, do, or do you have this money? Um, and if the answer is yes, then great. You can make big, you know, loan payments or you can stuff a bunch of money away in your emergency fund and you're in good shape. Um, but for most of us, the answer is no, we don't have, you know, we might not have all $560 to do this with. And so what do you do if you don't have all of the money to fill all of your categories? Um, and if that's the case, then we need to, um, we need to do some modifying. So how do you modify? You take your list. First step is to take your list that you've already made. You look at your amounts, you look at your list and you arrange your list in priority order. So now our list is in priority order. So we started with this list. This is kind of our general list. Now we've put everything in order. And this is um, the order that you should go in is urgent needs. Like needs should always be first. And at the top of the needs list should be urgent. So this car insurance is gonna come due pretty soon. That is an urgent need. You are going to have to pay this no matter what. So that's an urgent need. Um, and then we go down to other needs and then we go to fixed wants. So something like Amazon Prime, is it essential that you have Amazon Prime? No, that's not a need. That's a want. For some, some of you are like, it's a need. No, it's a want. Um, but you know, it's a fixed want. So that's not a price that you can really cut um, if you're going to have this service. So, um, you know, we go from urgent need to need to fixed wants down to the rest of your wants. Um, now, clothing, some of you are like, but clothing is a need. Yes, clothing is a need. But, um, you know, for most of us, we have enough clothes and enough shoes and enough coats. Um, if we're adults, chances are um, you know, we're in situations where we can make it work if we don't have to buy clothes for a while. So if you want to take six months to a year off of buying clothes or you want to really minimize a category, this is a great place to do it. Do we need clothes? Yes, we need clothes to wear in our bodies. However, do we need to be spending um, $100 a month on clothing? Definitely, you know, not most people. So, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to put the old amounts here and then we're gonna go through kind of what to do next if we don't have um, the amount. So let's say, you know, we're gonna stick with our original amounts for a minute. I'll adjust this. Um, what do we say for entertainment? 50. So this brought us to 560. Now, after you put everything in order and you get all the amounts, you need to figure out exactly how much money you need. Um, because we don't need, you know, hundred dollars for vacation every month to slip into that fund. We don't need to be spending hundred dollars a month on clothing, but some of these things are needs. Car insurance is a need. Car maintenance is a need. Medical is a need. Um, you know, and if we've put things in priority order, uh, you can kind of figure out, you know, what are the things that you definitely want to make sure you keep in your budget? So definitely the needs. Let's say you also want to keep, um, you know, Amazon prime in the budget. This puts us at if you add these numbers up, this is gonna be 310. This is how you figure out, this is how you figure out exactly what you need. You need to get this money somehow in your budget. Whether that means you need to cut from your regular budget, maybe you cut a little bit of your grocery fund, maybe you cut cable and just do internet because you have Amazon Prime so you can stream you know, your shows that way. Um, you know, you find less expensive options other, where, uh, other places in your budget so that you can come up with the $310 that you need for these categories. So you need to figure out what the need is and if you don't have enough money, you gotta shuffle some stuff around or start bringing in more income somehow. Um, you know, sell some stuff, pick up a part-time job, which I know is not glamorous, but hey, you know, we gotta do what we gotta do um, to get our expenses covered because we don't wanna live above our means. Um, you know, we need everything to work so that we can be financially secure. So let's say 310 is kind of, you know, that's the number that we absolutely need to have every month for our sinking funds. However, let's say you look at your numbers and you can't quite do the 560, but maybe you can do, um, you know, maybe you could do 360. Maybe that's how much money you have. So if you have 360, maybe we cut clothing, um, down to 25 and maybe we cut 
vacation. Maybe you, maybe you want to do a staycation. And so, you know, that's something that's really important to you or it's your family or you want to go visit someone local. Um, you know, if you're in big debt payoff mode or you don't have any emergency savings at all, you probably don't want to be doing this. But if you've been chugging along for a while um, and this is something that's really important to you, um, you know, start small. Do, let's say, 25 a month. And let's say because you want to do that vacation, it's more important to you than going to a concert or a baseball game or whatnot. So we're going to cut entertainment completely for now. So we're going to take the 310, we're going to add another 50, and that's going to get us to 360. So we knew that we needed 310, we had it. We have about $360 of wiggle room. So you know, we're going to allocate a little bit of money to these things. We're going to cut a lot. Um, we're cutting 200. Um, so we don't need to be spending this 560. We're going to spend the 360. Um, so that's kind of the order you go in. You put your, you put your, uh, sinking funds in order of priority, urgent need, need fixed wants, wants you figure out exactly how much money you absolutely have to have for us. It was that 310 and you draw a line and you find a way to fit this into your budget through either cutting other expenses or, um, you know, earning a little bit of extra income or, you know, selling a few things and then, um, and then you fund it in this order. So when money comes in, you know, the first bit of your paycheck that you have beyond your bills, maybe that goes to car insurance. And then the next paycheck of the month, you know, maybe you fill the rest of your categories and you just go in order. And as your expenses decrease over time, or let's say you bring in a little bit more income, you can kind of even these categories out. Now what's gonna happen is, um, you remember from our example in the beginning that car insurance is due in three months. Well, three months from now, you're gonna be able to cut this. So this is gonna go from 200 down to 100 because all of a sudden you have, um, you know, you've passed that three month mark, you paid your $600 car insurance, and now you have six months, so now you have 100. So this either takes your total down to 260, which will free up some money to put toward whatever step you're on, or you can start to beef up some of these other categories now. So that's kind of how it works. Um, you know, if you start and something's due right away, you gotta cut to make up for it. And then when it evens out, you can kind of even out a little bit. Now what most people do is they get really super into whatever step they're on and so they don't wanna increase these until they're out of debt or until they're, you know, they've made really good progress on their debt or definitely, you know, not until they've had at least a baby emergency fund. So, um, so that's kind of how it all works. And then you just adjust over time. Um, so that's the example. Um, these, <laughs> these are not a necessity, but I love them. These are the Erin Condren budget stickers. And this is the budget notebook. I'll link this in the comments as well. But that's kind of how it works. So I hope that helps um, answer some of those questions that people had in the comments of my other video. Uh, but again, if you guys have questions um, about this, go ahead and put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.